Hi everyone, today we are taking a deep dive into Kyber.ai, a video generation platform that you can start using today. So I previously featured Kyber in a video that I did on AI animation last week, but it was kind of at the back end of that workflow, so I don't know if everyone caught it. Plus, I really wanted to take a comprehensive look at Kyber because I think it's a platform that has a lot to offer. So when you first enter Kyber space, you're welcome, Kyber Marketing Team. That one's on me. Um, you'll be greeted with a couple of different options. You can begin with an initial image, basically image prompting. You can transform an existing video, so taking one of your videos and adding a stylization pass over it, although it's one of the coolest stylization passes I've come across. Uh, you can add your own song or audio file, which we're gonna take a look at later on. And lastly, you can just start writing a prompt. To keep things simple, we're just gonna start with writing a prompt. Like most AI generators, Kyber does have a preferred syntax that it likes to receive its prompts in. Although the devs are pretty insistent that Kyber's language model is pretty good at naturalistic language, I do think it's a good idea to just be aware of the preferred outline, but just treat it as a guide. So the breakdown is subject, prepositional details, setting, meta modifiers, and styling. So let's break that down a little further. So subject obviously is the main focus or character of your video. The prepositional details, according to documentation, includes the medium, additional details, and color, which describe the appearance features of the subject or other elements of the video. Setting is obviously your setting, location, uh, environment. And finally, the meta modifiers and styling, it's a little vague, but encompasses style, artist, website, and resolution. To be honest, I really haven't run into much on that meta modifiers or styling. So maybe that's something that will come into play later on. In the meantime, let's go try out a text prompt. So in playing around with Kyber earlier, I did discover that it does know who Jon Snow is, he who knows nothing. Um, so I gave it the prompt, young warrior with a black beard, Jon Snow in a black fur coat, hand glows with red magic, striding through a blizzard, gray skies, castle in the distance. You have a number of different prompt styles here um, that you can choose from sort of these artist inspired collections, as well as a number of other prompts down here. It's cinematic, photo taking on film, film grain, uh, et cetera, uh, photorealistic, 3D rendering, watercolor, oil painting, and steampunk. Kyber is stable diffusion based, so any of the stable diffusion type keywords will also work here. Thus far, I'm kind of finding that I'm mostly sticking to the styles just because uh, they look good. That said, if you feel like experimenting, there is a site called weloveai.ca. It's linked below. It just has a number of different stable diffusion styles in it that you can copy paste right into your prompt. I'm just going to stick with cinematic here. So um, once you have chosen all of this, you just hit your video settings button down here. Uh, you can select your video duration, your aspect ratio, and then camera movements. Uh, we'll talk about those in just a little while. And then the evolve function is that level of kind of hypnotic or hallucinogenic evolving that ends up happening over the course of your animation. That's something that I think is sort of inherently baked into Kyber, though we can tone it down by just simply turning this down. The way that Kyber works is that each frame of your animation generates off of the previous frame. So the AI isn't really thinking about things in a holistic term. It's really kind of a goldfish that only remembers, you know, a half a second ago. So if we crank the evolve knob up, we're gonna get even wilder results. But for the most part, I try to tame things down. We'll look at a crazier result later on. Once we have everything ready to go, we just hit go to preview frames. You'll see that it will cost you eight credits, basically one credit per second. So once you're set to go, you just hit preview frames. After about 30 seconds, you will be presented with four different keyframes for your video. In this case, I want to take, although I like this one, it has a very Winterfelly castle in there. I actually kind of prefer this because we're closer to them. So you just select what you want as your initial beginning frame and then hit create video. And after a few minutes, you'll have an animation. Let's take a look at it in full screen. So one of the first things that you'll probably notice is that sort of shifting, evolving look to it. But I think that there's some really cool use cases if you just lean into that. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. The other thing that you'll probably notice is that there isn't a lot of movement in the animation. It's probably because Kyber isn't trained on a lot 
of movement. So uh, again, there is a solution to that when we look at the video to video aspect. So now let's try out some text weights and see how that affects this video. So the way that prompting works in Kyber is as follows. I did notice that the hand was not glowing with red magic in that video. So let's try that, okay. Um, so we'll add a parentheses here. And then at the end of red magic, a colon, and all of the words in Kyber are weighted at one. And you'll want to add a, let's see, 1.7, let's just say. Um, you don't wanna go above, say like 1.8, otherwise the image and video really start to kind of break down and cause a lot of distortions. So really you're looking at weighting between 1.1 and 1.9. Similarly, negative prompting works. Let's try to take away the black beard by doing the same and colon. And then because every word is weighted at one, we want to go beneath one. So it'll be zero point, let's say two. Um, so at this point, we've negative weighted that down to 0.2. You don't want to go like negative one or negative four. So via our preview keyframes, we can see that our positive prompting on the red magic hands did indeed end up working. It doesn't look like the beard quite took, although actually looking at it, I guess he just kind of ended up more with a goatee. So well played, Kyber, well played. The final video came out pretty cool, although I realize now that I did like the meanest AI test that I possibly could, which was calling out hands. So, I mean, hands are still a thing. Okay, let's go take a look at image prompting now. So the other night I watched Renfield, the Nicolas Cage as Count Dracula movie. And then right after that, watched the first episode of Foundation, the Isaac Asimov series. Uh, to say the least, my dreams were a little bit weird that night. So the next morning I woke up and decided to roll up some images in in Mid Journey um, for, you know, Space Vampires, uh, which is also a movie called Life Force, which is both terrible and awesome at the same time. I had a few leftovers from that Mid Journey session, so I decided to take this and run it into Kyber to see what we could get. Now, when you run a image prompt in Kyber, you'll still be required to describe it. And although I could manually describe this, I think a good way of communicating to Kyber, since it does work in stable diffusion, is to use something like Replicate. So Replicate is a site that will take an image and translate it out into a prompt. And it will actually translate it out into a stable diffusion friendly prompt. So we simply upload our image and hit submit. Replicate returns to us with a prompt, a group of women in black robes standing on a bridge, detailed map painting by Vanessa Beecroft, CG Society, a bunch of other stuff. Um, so let's just grab that and take it back over to Kyber. So in Kyber, you can just drag your image over and then hit continue to prompt. We'll copy our replicate description. Um, I'm actually going to do something here. I'm not going to instead of standing, I'm going to say walking on a bridge. We're going to try to add some motion in here. And let's try that again in cinematic. Okay, hit video settings. We can again select the length of our video duration. I am going to say that the camera movement is going to be a zoom out since our vampire women are walking towards us. I want the camera zooming out. Um, I'm gonna uncheck this initial image in the first frame. That doesn't always work, it seems. I do tend to see the first frame or that initial reference image show up as our first frame pretty often, but well, let's give it a shot. And then I'm going to turn our evolve down. So let's take a look at how this ends up looking. And once again, we have our four starting images. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is that you can download any one of these so that you can really scrutinize it if you want to. Um, I'm just gonna sort of randomly pick this one. Now, there is a new feature in Kyber called Storyboard as well, which I think a lot of you will find handy. So you just hit this Storyboard button, which takes us back here uh, where we can change the prompt once again. So let's say that it is them walking on a bridge um, and then stepping onto a spaceship, a large spaceship, because they're space vampires. Um, okay, let's see how this works out. It didn't quite work out the way that I was hoping it was going to. Like, in fact, by the end here, they kind of turn into like stewardess nuns. Um, 
So yeah, not quite what I was hoping for. So I think that if you're looking for something kind of on the specific side, that what you should do is instead just use a separate image prompt and then kind of combine them together. I'm hoping at some point or another, Kyber allows you to change the reference image in the storyboards. But for right now, we kind of have this. I just as a point of reference, like this was the kind of thing that I was sort of more shooting for, uh, not nuns boarding a spaceship. So I'm just gonna run this really quickly and then comp the two of them together. So I think in general where Kyber's text to video does pretty well is if you're planning on doing kind of mood boards or presentation pieces or even some sort of conceptual pre-visualization. That said, there is some pretty cool like text to AI video stuff coming up in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at where I think that Kyber's real superpower is, and that is video to video. So this is just a clip from a stock video that I found on Pexels, a cyberpunk woman in a smoky hallway. I thought that would work really well for this sort of stylization. From a technical standpoint, the shot is very well done. And I think that's an important thing to note with this is it's the old, you know, garbage in, garbage out. The better your source material, the better the results you're going to get. So once again, fairly simple. We just take our video, drop it in here. Within a minute, we just continue on to the prompt. Um, I think it's really pretty good looking. I think if you conceive of like a short narrative project with this as a style, you're pretty much going to be able to attain it. For another example, I used this clip, which I used in my initial look at Gen 1 just four months ago. And this was the result out of Gen 1 at that time. To be honest, I actually still really like this output. Um, I think it has a real charm to it. Um, but anyhow, taking our source clip and then running it through Kyber gets us this. This was the Meteora watercolor look. Um, I mean, that's kind of insane. So again, that Gen 1 output was four months ago and we're here now. And just as a follow-up, I also ran it under the Lost preset and ended up with this, which I think is equally as cool. The final part of Kyber is the audio or song part, which I find pretty fascinating. This is where I think that ever evolving kind of morphing look really, really pays off. So I took a track from a lesson that I never got around to doing, which was taking Tom Morello, the guitar player from Rage Against the Machine, uh, his effects pedal board and trying to replicate them with stock effects in Ableton. So I generated an image in mid journey of a skateboarder, brought that into Kyber as well as the track. And then utilizing the storyboard function, I gave it three separate prompts. So let's take a look at how the whole thing came out. Remember kids, skateboarding is not a crime. So overall, I think it's a really fascinating step for AI video, and I'm really curious to see how Kyber.ai develops. Please let me know if you've tried it out, what you think of it, and what you're working on with it. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.